Hello everyone and welcome to the tutorial uh, part two on functional gears. Uh, this is deal mainly with uh, toothing issues. Uh, you'll notice I'm not on the functional screen at the moment. I'm on the non-circular gear screen. This is because I want to highlight a quick change that I've made. Um, when you tooth a non-circular gear, we used to have a problem with little jagged anti-aliasing marks showing up here because the gears are made with a virtual rack using digital subtraction and then grabbing the envelope of all the digital subtractions. Unfortunately, as you rotate a rack around, unless you rotate in infinitely small increments, you end up with little jaggies. And if I zoom right in on this uh, particular tooth so that you can see it and then tooth it, you can see the jaggies appear and then disappear. The new anti-aliasing code um, takes a loop through it after it's done and you should now have nice smooth uh, vectors inside your uh, roots. Alright, that's enough for that. Let's go to the functional screen and take a look at the issues involved with toothing. Okay, first of all we have two round uh, gears on the screen as is our typical startup. Um, let's tooth one and then tooth the other. I want to point out that um, on the screen you can see a mod and DP listed and at the moment is 2.9999 and we're asking for a module 3 so they're essentially the same number. Uh, same thing with DP, this is a DP of 8.4667 and it's telling us we got 8.4669. Uh, you might wonder about the differences between the mod displayed and the mod requested. In this case they're very close but they're not always very close. Uh, there's a couple reasons. First of all when you rotate two round gears normally, the relationship between the first gear and the second gear is a mathematical given. It is simply the angle of the first gear multiplied by the gear ratio between the two. But in functional gears, even these pretty much round ones, since there's no such thing as anything perfectly round, um, the we use calculus to find the center distance between the two. And um, those calculations like most things in calculus, are approximations. They never give an absolute answer. We're very close to the right answer, uh, four decimal places in on the mod, for example. However, that's the reason that things could change, or one reason that things could change. Another thing that you need to worry about is the same thing when it happens, and it applies to rotation. Um, let's modify this gear. I'm going to hit Not Edit, and I'm going to make this gear a little bit shorter on one axis. Um, now I'm going to hit the Tooth button, and I'm going to ask for a DP of 3, just like we did before. But now you'll notice my mod is reading 2.8401. This is because, unlike uh, non-circular gears in the non-circular section, functional gears have a particular purpose in life. You, you're trying to get a given uh, speed ratio when you're designing a functional gear. And because of that, it's very important to maintain as close to the center distance as you can. Uh, so what Gearotic will do is it will calculate the scaling of what a normal gear would have for a circumference at a mod 3 and then it will calculate what mod it would take in order to have the new circumference and in this case it's a mod 2.8401 now this means you couldn't uh, roll around gear on one of these non-circulars they're designed to be functional gears uh, in, in groups um, this is one reason why your mod will change. Another thing you need to worry about is when you're simulating and you take a look at a simulation and zoom way in. Most of the time you're going to find that it's pretty good. Uh, the mesh looks good, it's clear on both sides. But there are times, and they depend really on uh, the gear, the more misshapen the gear and the more scaling has had to go on, the greater the chance that you're going to see something like, uh, let's see if we can get one to happen here just simulate and zoom in. You're going to find gears that don't appear to mesh properly. And when that happens, you're going to notice that you're looser on one side of the tooth than you are on the other. It's as if the gear is not perfectly rotated in. And indeed it isn't. These two gears that I have on the screen, let me turn off the knot there, you can see it's not actually rotated perfectly. It's touching on one side and it's loose on the other. And this is again because calculus doesn't give exact answers. It gives approximations. Um, I can get a closer and closer approximation to make it look perfect, but that would slow down the program quite a bit. So I've tried to achieve a balance between speed um, of your experience and the 
um, accuracy in displaying the simulation. Now I should point out this affects only simulation. If you were to cut these two gears you would find uh, that they would naturally float to a position which is equal on either side of the tooth. Uh, so in that respect you don't have much to worry about. I'm just pointing out that look carefully at your meshes to make sure that they're not meshing before you think you have a problem. That can also be controlled by the width down here on the screen. If I turn off the simulation, I have my width set to 0.51 on this particular screen. Let me set it to 0.53, something that I would consider to be fairly extreme. And then retooth. And at 0.53 you can see our teeth are getting quite loose. Uh, if I want to go even more extreme, 0.55. And as I go up, the teeth get looser and looser. So that's your backlash adjustment. Uh, just change the width of the tooth. Uh, I wouldn't recommend 0 0.50. If you do do a uh, 0 0.50, you'll find that your teeth begin to get tight. Here's a 0 0.50, and you can see they touch on both sides. This would be a gear that you'd have to push along to get running. But at 0.53, uh, you wouldn't have any such problem. Uh, you'd find the gears are nice and loose. So how loose you want them to be or how tight you want them to be, that, of course, is up to you. Uh, adjust your numbers accordingly. And again, if I uh, zero in on our root here, you can see our anti-aliasing code also at work after the fact of creating these gears. Okay, that's for a standard set of non-functional gears which have rollover checked. Now we need to talk about an even worse set, uh, which is the non-rollover gear or the partial turn gear. Uh, before we go there, I'll mention one more thing. You can put these on your simulation screen in any order. You can drop a pinion on and then roll a wheel off of it. You could then roll another pinion off of that wheel. Uh, you can have multiple objects on the screen. You cannot roll a wheel on a wheel or a pinion on a pinion, of course. These shapes are meant to match together. This is only true of rollover gears. Once we uncheck rollover, our shapes become weirder, of course, because now the perimeter of the second gear is not necessarily equal to that of the first gear. These get harder to teeth because of that. But let's tooth our wheel, and then let's tooth our pinion, and see how this works out. Now, looking at this gear, you would think uh, that it is not meshing properly. In fact, you can see down here the teeth are jagging in, and the two lines are at zero. This is because zero and 360 degrees are mathematically the same number uh, to an angular program. This zero degree line of this tooth would probably be better fit into the other zero on this gear. Partial rotation gear, it has two zeros. We have the first tooth here at zero, and we have the second tooth here at zero. And the relationship between the two zeros can be a complex one. So let's start a simulation, you'll see what I mean. The second I start simulating, we find the proper zero. The simulation routines know where the start angle is. And the start angle, if I hit reverse and slow this down, the start angle is right here. And it's actually, to be, sh to, to be accurate, it's when this line would fit straight into this tooth. But that's going to be impossible because of this untoothed area. On a partial gear, we simply leave one area untoothed, and that's to show, this is at the addendum line, for, uh, uh, by the way, but this is to show that this gear can never rotate onto this area. There is no part of the wheel's curve which is appropriate for this area of the tooth, because this is the extended area of the tooth. We can see that the mod has dropped to 2.79, because it had to scale quite a bit in order to uh, fit 12 teeth uh, sorry, we're asking for 25 teeth. Uh, we had to fit 25 teeth at a module 3 onto a perimeter that's really much smaller, but we really don't want to change the centering distance. In fact, we can't if we want to remain true to our numbers. You can see on the screen at the bottom, when I dragged my knot down, I generated a command for 93 degrees at 0 .413, uh, 0 .4113. And if we watch our transfer graph over here, we'll see that Point four one oh nine is at our slowest point. We asked for point four one one three. We're getting point four one zero nine. Um, this is a very close match to speed ratios, and the compromise and the slight change in position is just due to, again to those uh, calculus-based inaccuracies of not wanting to take too too long in order to uh, uh, come up with the numbers we need. Now when you're on a partial gear like this, you'll see my simulation just rotated to its limits and reversed. 
having these in your machine on simulate would create a situation where your entire machine would reverse and that's controlled on the property screen I'll switch to the property screen here for a second you can see at the bottom right hand side we have a simulation blockage solution we can reverse we can stop if I select stop here and then select simulate you'll see it'll find zero again and then begin its process but when it gets to the end of the gear it'll just simply stop the simulation you can also have an e ignore loop and if you have ignore loop selected um, unfortunately you're going to find that you go into uh, never never land when you hit this area of the curve which is untoothed because there is no area corresponding on the wheel so what happens is we jump and the gear takes an instantaneous jump to the new position. I tend to leave mine on reverse so that I can watch the 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 uh, where they're going to reverse direction and know something about their um, about the way they work. Take note that these partial turn gears are the only way to be accurate to the numbers that you're demanding on the ratios. So if you're the type that you're trying to drive a cam at a particular speed and so on, you're going to want a partial turn gear. Partial turning can work both ways. Uh, in this case, I made the wheel shorter and thus made the pinion larger, so the pinion had to have an area which was untoothed. Uh, but I could just as easily, and let me uh, go back to the functional, hit not edit, uh, should turn on the knots. I can grab a knot and make this gear larger. Now the pinion has gotten smaller. And this is problematic. Um, you'll see here on the pinion, I have a little notch. This is because the pinion is coming out almost like a logarithmic gear and has some left over. I have not yet dealt with that situation. So if you're going to make a wheel which is larger than the pinion, uh, you could run into toothing problems. And to show you what I mean, the wheel uh, tooths properly and shows its proper untoothed curve, but the pinion has trouble. And in some instances, it can be at this point impossible to tune the pinion. So um, when you're designing your gears, you t should do your best to keep the wheel so that it is at best smaller than the pinion. And then you'll find that you have no problem. This will be fixed over time as I find a better algorithm for uh, computing the unused space on a pinion. But when gears get too small, um, their relationship just uh, gets very complex. So anyway, that'll be fixed up over time. So again, that's all it takes. Um, that's all you really need to know. You set your thickness as you do with uh, any other gear and simply say create wheel or create pinion to put them on the screen. Uh, so keep track of your rollovers. Uh, but other than that, I think you should find that the toothing in most cases works fine. If you find a situation where you can't tooth, try adjusting some of your numbers and you'll find that you can usually. Uh, one last thing I'll mention before we end this video. Up here in the corner is what looks like a screwdriver. Uh, one person had written into me saying that uh, something had gone wrong with the drawing. This is actually the drawing of your rack that tooths uh, these gears. Rather than use a real rack, which can be very difficult uh, programmatically. I use one tooth of a rack. I stick it in at the tooth angle location. I use a hypocyclotic curve uh, to move it in and out of the tooth. And the curvature I use is the instantaneous angle of curvature uh, of the curve as I walk my way around it. Uh, just for those who are wondering how this type of toothing is done. The algorithm quite, has gotten uh, quite sophisticated. You can see it's very fast. I call it a Coke bottle algorithm because you can see the little Coke bottles it creates as it goes up through its involutions. Okay, that's it. I hope you enjoy it. Have fun. Enjoy the program.